Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Nina Ribena's Art General Prompts and more. It's spring week four and today I want to work on a piece of picture framing mount board. So that's my substrate today and I want to use distress oxides to create my background. I'm going to be using broken china and bundled sage. So let me just take the lids off these. I'm going to use a blending tool as well. And I want, where's all that pink come from? I've got pink on something. I want a fairly subtle background um, today. So I'm trying to sort of apply this ink quite quite lightly. I'm not going in too, too heavy with this. And I want um, the blue at the top and green at the bottom because um, the blue is going to represent sky and the bottom is my grass. Um, very spring-like today. Um, I've got an idea for this page and I just hope that it is going to work out. So let's have a go at doing this. Right, okay. So now I want to do the grass. So let me just change my little pad over. I've already inked these up slightly so that um, I'm not sort of fiddling around for ages. Let me just wipe my fingers on a baby wipe as well, just so that I don't sort of end up making a mess of my, my page. And so I'm just going to add the green at the bottom like this, blending it into the, into the center. There we go, I'm happy with that. And now what I want to do is just spritz this with water. So let me just put the lids back on these and get my water bottle and let's have a look and spray with water um, just to oxidize these inks. Just get some nice texture going in the background. And I can build this up again if I want to. So I'm just going to heat set this with my heat tool. Yes, but I just want to go over it um, again, just to sort of, you know, deepen those colours. Remember, you can always add to it, but you can never take it um, away if, you, if it's too dark and you add too much. Now I want to draw a whimsical tree um, and my tree is going to go sort of roughly halfway across my page. So that will be my trunk. I'm putting pencil marks and then I want... So hang on a second, let me just... I want to put some markers down, you'll see why in a in a second, just to give myself a guide because what I want to do now is my tree is going to come down something like this um, and that will be the base of it. So let me turn this upside down. So something like this. These are just pencil marks because I want to paint this in white. So. So it'll come down something like like that and I can rub all of these marks out afterwards so I'm not worried um, about this at all. And then I want some branches going off to either, either side. And I'm just turning my page just to make it easier. And then I'll have some branches in the middle and I'm just putting these in as, as I say, as a as a guide. There we are. Okie dokie. I think I'm pretty pretty happy with that. I need to sort out this bottom so I'm just going to fiddle around with my overall shape until I'm happy and then I'll come back. I'm not sure how well you can see this basic outline but, um, but there it is and I'm going to go over this with my white Posca paint pen and you'll be able to see um, this better because I want my tree to be white. So now that I've got my basic shape I can just go over it. Now that's my basic tree shape and I'm going to carry on working from this. So take a look at that for anybody who really struggles with trees. This is just a really easy way um, to get the basic um, shape and of course I can branch off from this now. Um, And then I'll fill it out um, in a second and I'll show you the process that I'm going to use. But I'm just going to start off by doing doing this. And of course I'm rubbing out any pencil marks as I, as I go along because I just don't need those anymore. They're just there for a guide. 
So let me just talk you through where how I'm deciding where to make my branches. Here we've got sort of like a natural curve and so oh gosh this paint paint pen here we go. So I'll add one there and then we can maybe have another one down down there. Um, what else do I want to do? We can maybe have one coming off here like that and then where we've got that Y I can have another one there. And so this is what I'm just doing. And then I'll thicken these up in a minute and I'll show you how I do that. Now I want to fill this section of the tree in. So what I want to do is just work out how, what kind of shape I want. And of course I'm going to have to thicken this up and get it to meet like like this and it might look a bit strange at first but by the time it's all filled in it will all come to together and of course we'll thicken all the branches as well so I'm going to paint this in in white. Rather than do it with a white Posca paint pen which will take forever and use all my ink I'm just going to do it with some acrylic paint and it might um, need a couple of coats as well and I'm using a brush with a point, an angled brush, just so that I can get into the tricky areas. I am really, really happy with how this is looking so far and I just love the way that it fades out towards the top here. So, oh, whoopsie daisy, I forgot to put the lid back on my Posca paint pen. So what I want to do now is just thicken out um, these branches and what I'm going to do is start at the top of these and work my way down. So just, you know, making sure that they're knobbly as branches um, usually are. And so this is the kind of technique that I'm going to be doing and I'll do this on all of them. Um, so for instance here and I can you know fill in any any gaps and make an outline with the Posca paint pen. They're so handy to have these. I would only bother with unless you're sort of really into doodling and stuff just a black and a white and they're I just find it invaluable I really do. Because unlike your Signo Uniballs, they're permanent. So I'm just going to keep going like this. Just thickening up these branches and as soon as I've finished, I'll be back. So this is how my tree looks so far and I'm really pleased with it. I've just thickened up those branches. So there we go. I'm trying to keep my hands away for anybody who would like to take a screenshot. I know sometimes that, you know, I want to take a picture of something as reference to try and get um, a shape. So feel free to do so if that um, is helpful. Um, so I want to add some blossoms. I know we've already done blossoms for the spring prompt already, but my blossom um, postcard was very very different to this. Now I've chosen four colours of paint and I'm using craft paints for this because they're much much runnier in consistency and I've chosen an off-white, I think it's called Storm Cloud, a peachy colour, a pearl um, pearlescent pink and um, a deeper pink as well and um, I want to apply these using um, Q-tips. You've seen me do this technique before, we did it for one of the autumn prompts but I thought it would be lovely for this spring page. So I've just tied some bundles of Q-tips together just using those kids loom bands. I had a pile of them on my desk somewhere. Oh, here we, here we go. These are the loom bands that were all the rage for kids um, a while ago. You could buy them in a small pack for 50p and these are just really useful small elastic bands for, you know, thing, things like this. I also use them to keep my wallpaper samples closed. I roll them up in a roll and I use loom bands to hold them together so that I can keep them in a box all nice and neat. So I've got three bundles of these because, of course, I can use, although I've got four colours, I can use both sides. I'm not going to add 
add any green for the leaves i know that um you know my trees in my garden have got leaves on as well but i don't want to take away from that pink blossom and i don't want it to get too busy either so this is just you know very impressionistic so i've got a glass palette off to my right hand side that i'm going to be working on it's a bit speckled but you know that's fine it's clean enough and i'm just going to put some of my paint onto this glass palette and as soon as i've done that i'll be start back. off with the white and the way to do this i found when i did it before was just to press really lightly so choose your area and press down really lightly not too hard here and i'm trying the white first because i want to um, introduce the colors um palest first um, ending with the darkest and then I can go over it again um, with some of the pale colours if I want to. So I'll continue like this just by the branches. I'm, you can see here that I'm just focusing where the branches are and as soon as I've done this I'll move on to the next colour and I'll come back. So that's the first layer of the white that was using Storm Cloud and I'm going to do exactly the same now using this peach which is a Do Crafts paint also in tea pink so start anywhere and by adding the colors I think it's really going to start to bring this to life oh I just think that is such a gorgeous color so I'm going to continue doing this and then I'll show you what it looks like once I've added this layer that's how it's looking after it's had the tea pink which is sort of the peachy colour and now I'm going to add some of this pearl blush. This is how it looks after a layer of the pink and let me just tilt that just look at the glimmer and pearlescence on that it's just beautiful and I've got a bit of the pink left on my palette and let me just show you I've added some water thinned it down and I want to splatter I've just got the urge to splatter so I'm just going to, oh, I might need to add a bit more water. We'll see. There we are, happy with that. Oh, this is how it's looking so far after the splatter. I just love that shine. Can you see it if I, if I tilt the page? It's just gorgeous. So I just want to add some depth now. So I'm going to be using the darker pink, which I've just put on my palette. And I'm going to do the same thing um, again. There we go. And this should really, really lift it and just give it a bit of depth. Now, and I just absolutely love how this is coming together, but I want it more dense. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to repeat the whole of that process all over again, starting off with the white, working up to the peach and working through all those colours until I'm happy with it. This is how my page is looking and um, I've added some blossoms at the bottom as well. Now I have got some primroses in my garden around the base of the trees and um, you know around my borders and that's what they look like and they're sort of surrounded by green foliage and I think I'm going to add that to the bottom of the tree here. So I'm going to use some of this um, green here. I've been having a play um, just to see what I can come up with. So I think what I'll do is add a little bit of that. So I'm just going to make another bundle here using, there we go. And I've just been playing with mixing colours as well to see if I can get the colour colours right. So I'm just going to add a few of these along the base of the, the tree. So this is sort of, you know, the leaves that the um, primroses are nestling in like that. And I'll do it the other side as well. You know, this is very abstract. Doesn't have to look perfect. There we are. And I'm going to give this a dry. Now, I didn't have any paints, the colours of my primroses. So I've just mixed some. And, you know, those colours are near enough to me. And so I'm just going to use some individual baby um, Q-tips now. And we'll add a couple of the... So they've got five petals. So I'm just going to do, do this. And it's just an impression of them and I'm happy with that. And in my garden, I've got less of the purple and more of the yellow. We'll overlap them as well. 
just to make it look a bit more natural. And then my primroses have got a bright yellow centre so we'll just add a touch of bright yellow just to finish them off. So I just want to um, think about what I want to do for a border and have a think as to whether I want to add a quote and what that might um, be. I think that's so pretty and I think I want to use the Distress Oxide in Bundle Sage to um, frame my piece as well because I don't want to introduce sort of any more colour so I'm going to see how this looks by just adding it to the outside of my page feel that that border is not quite dark enough so I'm going to add some peeled paint. I don't want to overdo it and I don't want to introduce too many colours as I say and you see instantly I can see that that is better. And so to finish my page off I've just added some words here. Art is your story, savour the magic of doing, art speaks for your soul and I've used the Dina Wakeley collage words for, for this. Um, they're printed out on thin tissue paper and of course this has blended perfectly in with my tree trunk so I've just cut the ones that I wanted um, out. Um, I've had to trim some of them down as well just to get them to fit and I've glued these down with um, matte medium. Um, so you can barely see those and then I just felt that the green area in the middle just looked as if it needed something so I've added some butterflies the butterflies are just cut out from some of my wallpaper samples I've only glued them in the middle as well so that these are dimensional and then I've added the antenna by hand and that is it so I hope you've enjoyed um, this video this week um, of course trees can be interpreted to suit any time of year so I know that um, some of you ladies um, down under are doing autumn because it's your autumn time and just to remind you this was the page that I did um, last year for fall let me just um, open this out a second and show you flat my book is just um, too too bulky so I'll leave the link to this video as well in the description box below um, of course you can interpret this prompt any way you like you don't have to do a tree you can um, you know as long as it fits the spring prompt you can do anything so I look forward to seeing what everybody else decides to come up with for this week i hope you enjoyed that and you know would really appreciate a thumbs up if you did and let me know what you think in the comments below and take care everyone i'll see you all again soon bye for now